Human Genome Sciences. What a great company for lots of reasons. They've done wonderful things in medicine. Yes, at some point, they have to be rewarded. And at some point, their marketable products will turn into profits. And having said that, there are various other things in the pipeline that they own. The most important thing is, what is the asset worth? What is the value of the company? What will be the community doctor patient relationship through the billing system with Ben Lista? And where will those shipments increase over time, which would mark up the asset into profitability? That would be a good reason for people to own a company, is when they do start to turn a profit, is where people want to buy them. I've got a weekly chart here. And I am showing on a weekly level here, three weeks closing above this 10-week this moving average for the very first time in a long time. Now, granted, when Human Genome back in 2010, and they got their approval for their product and they got manipulated once again um, through the whole processes is that they did get their approval. So when you take a look carefully here in this area, you go back to when it all started, when we owned it, because we did. We owned it way down here. I'll put a horizontal trend line for you. This is the where it got sold off down into 2009, and you had some gaps here. And you can tell on the weekly chart Here's a monthly view of human genome. Now, granted, back in 2009, when you're looking at this, we went all the way up to the peak, and it went through the bin lista, got approved, and everything else. And ever since its approval, they have walked the stock down. And the big money that's been in it, well, here's your half-monthly breakout bar that occurred back in its first discoveries of the bin lista move and it was on sale in 2009. You can see at the half bar breakout point where the highs were made, you can see where the peaks were made coming from the same half bar right across, right there. Now, we're down here. And we break this downtrend on a monthly level. When you stretch this out, it's going to be about right here, and you're just a little bit on the other side of it right now. Yes, you are. And what that would mean from a monthly level, okay? So when I go ahead and zoom this part of the monthly chart right here, you can see that this monthly diagonal trend line is that when the equity clears and holds support at 960, it will come up and it will challenge some of the, you know, these monthly rollovers are not good at all. However, on a monthly level, this $15 area is going to be a major resistance area right up in here. Now, having said that, you're slightly on the right corner of that trend line ever so slightly. And what you would be looking for with improvements within the company structure of its business model, as its business model improves, then the shareholders improve. Now, Mr. Plain, can you give me some of the stats of the short interest on this equity? The monthly level, we're right here, and we're going to get on the outer side of that. What is the short interest on the name? The short interest on the name right now, there's about 28.77 million shares short as of 12-30-2011, and that represents 20.4% of the float. Okay. So with any good news, with approvals and whatnot, at some point, are any gap ups into these resistance levels would definitely... Uh, bring those shorts off the sideline. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, 
So you've seen about 10% come out of that, as well as the 10% increase in the short interest. Uh, so you have 14.14% held by insiders, 82.5% held by institutions, 20.4% short. So the question becomes, when they do have to cover and there is a price gap, who's going to give them their shares? Uh-huh. Uh huh. You're talking about ILMN, yeah, sixteen dollars. Um, and it had how much short interest? Uh huh. Okay. Let's hold on one second. So, would it be fair to say when you take a look at stocks like ILMN, they had 25, so they had a big, uh, what was the short interest on this one? Okay, and... It was. They're a little bit different of a company, and there was some headlines on this one today, right? What was the news that people were featuring in biotech today? Sure. Sure. It's fifty three eighty five. So so shareholders that get buried in these things, you know, the thing was down to twenty five dollars when it's gone. Right. On uh, right. Well let me ask you in comparison to human genome sciences, if human genome sciences was to get a bidding war ever possible going for it, because it is quite a you know, remarkable little company and if it has everything going for it, it would be very attractive buyout to its uh, bigger sponsor, GlaxoSmithKline, right? Well, yeah, I mean, Glaxo has a lot invested in them already. You know, sure, these are two different companies, but, you know, you have to look at what the intellectual property is with HGSI and their long-term pipeline, and what you find with the larger big pharma players is that they didn't invest enough in R&D and that they're finding that they're going to need more drugs going into the future to compete. Yep. And that's been a long pent-up demand of the 2012 biotech model that we feature back in 2010 is that now this particular company fundamentally has to stand on its own merit and its own discoveries and the big players is M&A activity going to be soaring in biotech this year. It's very possible when you take a company that does have value though, that's the qualifier, it must have that. And those things are in line. Well then you've got quite a value there. And you will get moves when they have big short interest. So this one here is a hostile bid takeover. Could it happen over here? It certainly could. But outside of something like that, what about it being profitable? And what about new discoveries in the pipeline? I'm going to conclude the fact that this is a primary example. You got a bullish monthly chart starting in January 2012. That's this right here. I showed the weekly chart. That one is about to close four weeks above its weekly moving averages, which I talked about on the 10 week so far. This is a weekly bottom here. It's flattened out. You close four weeks above it. And then as you climb back above it, you would, if there was a big short squeeze or any news that gaps it up, the shorts are going to run around up into the 16 to $18 neighborhood. And not only that, it is a bullish setup outside of the economic environment. The chart environment is perfect. Now, as these companies go through their discoveries, 
the value like this one here, ILMN, HTSI. So, well, thank you very much. So, you're telling me the institutional ownership is buried, Mr. Plain, and they haven't dumped the stock? Is that it? So if people had to liquidate, uh -huh. all right, and they're going to wait for the values to come into play, aren't they? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Well, we're going to conclude where the company is, what happens with big short interest, how they would turn, what would take them from their bear to the bull, and what would be the criteria. We've discussed it throughout the video, and there's a lot more to it. But MMTs, once again, it's part of the learning process of knowing where values may be in m a activity that you're taught and various other things that go along with the scenarios that's been described herein is you would be looking for quality and leadership.